So uh, uh, my talk is about how digital technology will affect the health domain. I don't have any conflict of, of interest uh, regarding this lecture. And we know that we're talking about digital technology in medicine. We mean drug, drug development, disease diagnostics, analysis of health plans, health monitoring, digital consultation, surgical treatment, managing medical databases, personalized treatments, and of course, medical treatment. When we're talking about health, we are dealing about big, big data, cloud, telemedicine, artificial intelligence, mHealth and pHealth. And this is uh, all about uh, departments, states, and of course, registries. Uh, a very uh, crucial uh, part of the e-health is telemedicine, which uh, uh, it deals with preventive medicine, education, telerehabilitation, arrhythmias, chronic diseases, lifestyle, and so forth. Artificial intelligence is very important nowadays, and it is incorporated in imaging techniques. Uh, it deals with coronary artery disease and heart failure, electrophysiology, prognosis and treatment, and also enhances diagnosis. Uh, the artificial, artificial intelligence growth uh, very uh, much, and this is due to the increasing healthcare expenses, uh, to the larger geriatric population, to imbalance between health workforce and patients, to increasing global healthcare expenditure, to continue shortage of nursing and technician uh, staff, and that's why artificial, artificial intelligence is becoming more and more a part of the uh, medical technology. So uh, we're dealing with the digital technology in medicine. We're talking about drug development, disease diagnostics, analysis of health plans, health monitoring, digital consultation, surgical treatment, managing medical databases, personalized treatment, and of course, medical treatment. The e-health uh, is, uh, is comprised from uh, and it's dealing with artificial intelligence, telemedicine, cloud computing, big data, and uh, personalized health. And we're dealing with when we are talking about telemedicine, we're referring to telerehabilitation, arrhythmias chronic diseases, lifestyle, preventive medicine, and of course, education. Artificial intelligence uh, is improving a lot, and uh, it's, uh, it's about enhanced diagnosis, prognosis and treatment, electrophysiology, coronary artery disease, and heart failure, and of course, imaging. The drivers for uh, the improvement in artificial intelligence in healthcare uh, are the increasing individual healthcare expenses, a larger geriatric population, the imbalance between health workforce and patients, the increasing global healthcare expenditure, and the continuous shortage of nursing and technician staff. Uh, since the last year, there is a list of the medical devices with uh, incorporation of artificial intelligence algorithms. And uh, all these uh, lists have been uh, produced by the uh, American Heart Association and approved by the uh, FDA. Now let's see uh, a few examples. For example, how radiology uh, is uh, uh, compared to computers. Uh, the radiology, as uh, we know, radiology so far, uh, has many false negative and many false positive. Uh, and 31% of the American radiologists experience a malpractice uh, climb. And probably this is the reason that the radiology residency in the United States is uh, decreased. On the other hand, uh, by artificial intelligence, 
in other words, by the diagnosis of the disease by the computer, the accuracy is around 95%, especially in mammographies. Uh, many breast cancer surgeries could be avoided. Uh, definitely the artificial intelligence, the intelligence can do better in pneumonia than the uh, physicians. And, and also there is an accurate diagnosis of uh, the uh, CT of the liver, lung, brain, and as compared to board certified radiology. And furthermore, the computers are cheaper. Uh, also, uh, nowadays, there are many companies which produces uh, uh, AI algorithms for, uh, for uh, radiology. There are many FDA uh, approvals and it seems that the more simple cases will be uh, analyzed by the artificial cell intelligence and the radiologist, the physician, has to do more complex cases. So this is the end of radiology. Probably not. Uh, I uh, will refer to a, a famous uh, doctor from Harvard Medical School who said that if a physician can be replaced by a computer, then she or he deserves to be replaced by a computer. Uh, also, the pathology, uh, in pathology, uh, artificial intelligence has a lot to do, and probably it's better, the computer is better than the, um, the physician who reads the pathology uh, specimen. And we know that uh, when, uh, the specimens are read by the pathologist. There is a strike in heterogeneity. The agreeing is as low as 48%. On the other hand, the, uh, the, 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 the reading by the computer, by an algorithm of artificial intelligence, have many uh, advantages. Uh, the, the computer can see the whole uh, slide. Uh, the algorithms notice things that can be missed. There are also uh, analysis of the DNA sequence, the RNA sequence, the proteomics, and the time is uh, much uh, less. So probably in the, in the future, the computer will replace the pathologist. In dermatology, the artificial intelligence has a, a lot of advantages, especially in the uh, diagnosis of uh, melanoma. And we know that the physician uh, is doing uh, the, the, the mistake in the melanoma diagnostic up to 50%. So uh, the benefits of AI, there are some uh, readings in the, in, the paper, in, the, in the newspapers like advice on health, doctor does not always know best. End of doctor knows best. Uh, Ophthalmology also um, has to, in ophthalmology, AI has many things to do, and especially digital medicine and telemedicine, especially in the interpretation by the optical computer tomography or the, of the retinal diseases. And here you can see that by using an iPhone and this, uh, this uh, tool here, uh, you can see the uh, the, 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 the retina, and then you can transform by telemedicine these pictures to a more specialized uh, center for be seen by a specialized uh, uh, ophthalmologist. In cardiovascular diseases, uh, the EKG uh, are machines uh, that uh, the, the can predict even if the uh, the rhythm is sinus rhythm. They can predict the atrial fibrillation. Also, the echo interpretation can be done very rapidly using artificial intelligence. And also the MRI. And of course, we all know the smart watches, which are used uh, quite often. And in the near future, uh, a major diagnostic tool will be such a, a smart watch. Uh, which is seen uh, by, by, by in, in, in many, many cases more and more. In oncology, uh, we know that artificial intelligence 
improves the interpretation of mammography and also the analysis of mutation is very helpful in, uh, in the, in the uh, prognosis and the uh, treatment of uh, many, many uh, cancers. Uh, the robotic surgery is doing a lot of uh, progress, but uh, it seems that uh, the predicted year that machines will match human performance will be uh, much later, let's say 30 years or, or later. So uh, artificial intelligence and digital medicine and uh, telemedicine is very important in, uh, in the, the treatment of mental illness. Uh, we know that mental illness is a dominant factor tied to misery. And uh, we know that uh, patients prefer to share their thoughts with machines than a doctor and psychiatry is a major field where the telemedicine is doing a lot of uh, progress. Nursing also is going to be influenced by the new technology. The robot nurses uh, will help to deliver food and medications, will take the vital uh, signs while the remote monitoring of patients uh, will be uh, more and more and Therefore, there will be a reduction in the hospital uh, workforce. Of course, always we have in mind that a patient uh, probably prefers to talk to a physician than to talk to a computer, but things, I think, are changes. Uh, are you concerned about the increase in artificial intelligence? Personally, not but I'm concerned about the decrease in real intelligence. We all know President Obama and uh, his wife, and uh, uh, seven years ago, he said uh, that I want the country that eliminated polio and mapped the human genome to lead a new era of medicine, one that delivers the right treatment at the right time, every time to the right person. This is the beginning of uh, personalized uh, medicine. Uh, when we are talking about the traditional medicine, medicine which uh, is performed uh, nowadays, uh, traditional medicine assumes that all patients with common signs and symptoms share the same pathognomonic and will respond similarly to medical therapies. But we know that there is significant heterogeneity within the same phenotype. But on the other hand, the precision medicine does not assume a common phenotype for studying the population across. For example, patients with hypertension or hypercholesterolemia may display different pathophenotypes at a molecular level. The precision medicine incorporates lifestyle, genomics, environmental exposures, various omics and sensors, and describe a pattern, a different pattern for every patient. So if you, let's see this example, let's imagine a, 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 a few patients who have some kind of disease and now we give, we give them the same dose for everybody, let's say 100 milligrams. But according to the genotype, uh, there are a few patients who will need 500 milligrams because they are ultra rapid metabolizers of this medication. There are many, the main bulk of the patients who will need the 100 milligram dose. And finally, there are poor metabolizers who will need only 10 milligrams. So uh, by analyzing the, the genome, we can find uh, some population who will need another dose of, the, uh, of this kind of medication. Of course, there are difficult ethical, legal, and social issues. Uh, we need to ensure the genetic uh, privacy. Always there is an anxiety which is associated with the knowledge of the uh, genetics. Uh, we don't know how will doctors use the information. Uh, we need to educate the participants, doctors and nurses, and of course, genetic uh, counselors. And of course, we have to uh, be cautious about the uh, 
use of this uh, new technology and new, um, and new data from the insurance companies. Now, the societal impact of personalized medicine, uh, there are many legal and ethical questions. Who should have access to the person's genetic profile? How will we protect the genetic privacy and prevent genetic discrimination in the workplace and in our healthcare? And how will you, as consumers, use genetic information to our benefit? Of course, there are challenges to precision medicine. Medicine, definitely, there is a boom in technological advances, for example, gene editing. Uh, but we don't know yet if uh, there is a demonstration of effectiveness in therapy uh, in comparison to the, uh, to the usual uh, medicine. Uh, we need to design clinical trials. We have to know the healthcare costs. And of course, uh, the professionals and the public has to accept the new methodology. Now, how well the health systems will be influenced by the new technology? Uh, we can, by using the electronic health record, we can predict the end of life. Uh, and we know that 80% of the uh, patients prefer to die at home, but only 60% die in hospitals. So I, I think that the readmissions, the hospitalizations will be reduced by artificial intelligence and uh, definitely uh, at, at no cost. Uh, the, also the sepsis can be predicted by artificial intelligence and uh, we can prevent the nosocomial infections. Uh, patients could be at home and uh, could be uh, followed up by surveillance uh, video. Uh, in, uh, in the uh, era of the coronary, in the, of the intensive care units, uh, we can have uh, intensive care units which uh, will be uh, electronically connected with each other. And of course, the personnel of the, uh, the coronary care unit will be uh, reduced. And definitely the artificial intelligence will empower non-physicians to take on more work. Uh, now, uh, another uh, result of the new technology will be uh, the need for intensive care units, uh, operation rooms and uh, emergency rooms, but uh, the hospital rooms uh, will be uh, definitely will be reduced and many things will be monitored remotely and uh, by artificial intelligence will be a monitoring surveillance. We'll use more and more the, the sensors like the, the smart watches we uh, saw before also will be the uh, full uh, sensors. The remote monitoring uh, will be uh, used uh, more and more. Uh, there will be continuous glucose monitoring for diabetes, usually uh, by the use of, of uh, various sensors, and will be uh, various programs of wellness, like step counting and weight and blood uh, pressure monitoring, as well as cholesterol monitoring. There are many potential challenges. Uh, there are definitely there will uh, be some developmental costs, uh, some integration issues like ethical issues, uh, issues of, for privacy and security. And of course, we will need some federal and state uh, regulations, and, but all this uh, can be done. And I think that we will see them in the next uh, five years. Definitely by using all this technology, we have to avoid the discrimination and uh, some people will be uh, rather uh, have some difficulties in understanding all these things and use uh, the new technology. But uh, personally, I'm optimistic. It's not only the uh, grandfathers, but also the, the children who can teach the, 
their parents and their grandparents to use the new technology. Definitely, all this mess will be eliminated. Uh, all the paper records will be eliminated and displaced by replaced by computers. Uh, many physicians will have a problem, I'm sure, in the in the in the future. Uh, the, the, the simple cases will be answered by uh, artificial intelligence and uh, computer, and the more difficult ones will be referred to a physician. And definitely the research is changing. Uh, now we see medical studies, research studies, uh, who have used uh, many, many thousands of, of patients uh, because they, 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 they use the cloud technology. Also, the analytics uh, are improving. And of course, the wearables uh, help a lot in the uh, formation of the, the new uh, research studies. Uh, now, uh, I think that uh, everyone in the planet uh, will have some some uh, benefit from the new technology, then the personalized health information, patients in Ghana and patients in Greece or patients in the United States. And just for the end, to say that uh, a robot called Xiaoyi passed China's examinations for human physicians. This is just for uh, some kind of thinking in the past. Thank you very much for your attention.